Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Robert Lyon here with G uh, Gino Nadarov. Today we're going to be talking about life insurance and the power and basically how to leverage life insurance. So I, I don't think I'm a, a life insurance expert. I'm pretty new to it. So I'm going to be asking, you know, Gino, the basic questions of like, you know, how to get into life insurance. But I think I think the most important one I want to start is why life insurance? You know, what's so cool about it? What are you excited about it? Why do people do it? Yeah, the reason why life insurance came about was because I was trying to figure out a way where how can I how can I leverage other than a bank or a line of credit or a credit card or a loan? Where else can I park my money? Bank is, uh, you know, obviously banks are, are, you know, the most, you know, oh, I need to put my money in the bank. But that's a usual like common thing everybody does, but they don't realize and they're not getting any advantages by doing that. And putting your money in the brokerage account is probably better than putting it in a bank. But if you don't want to take a risk on that, where do you put your money and how do you keep it, mitigate risk uh, in a sense or, or and have your money grow? So life insurance is the most powerful thing in the sense of compound interest. So if you get uh, life insurance through, for example, you know, whole life and you get either a cash value or a debt benefit, both you'll still get debt benefit, but you will, when you do a cash value life insurance, you're able to leverage the fact that it's like having a, a place to put your money. So what you do is you're basically using life insurance as a bank in a sense, and in your own bank by putting money into it and having the ability to leverage the money. So, and, and it grows tax-free. So that's the power of life insurance. Now, people that get into life insurance, they usually get into the traditional way where they go and they get a life insurance for their life and they get a really big debt benefit. That's ideal for people that are near death. At a young age, you may not worry about the debt benefit as much than your actual cash value. So yeah. where you're, during your, your youth or during your adult years, you kind of want to have a cash value where you can put money into it, you'll still get a debt benefit, maybe not a million bucks, but maybe like half a million or 250,000. You'll still get the debt benefit, but you're really, what your main thing is your cash value is going to uh, oversee the debt benefit. And as the yeah. cash value grows, it becomes um, bigger and bigger because it's compound interest. So even though it's growing in your account, you have the ability to take that money that you put into it, take it out and leverage against it like a loan, like you would do on a 401k, which I've done and I bought real estate on 401k, taking mm -hmm. the money out and using that and paying myself interest instead of paying the banks. So right. now when you talk about, you know, how do you become your own bank? This is basically you are leveraging your own money. You're using that money to invest in real estate or other assets or anything. And at the same time, your money that was there is still growing compound interest without ever being touched. Meaning it, it, it doesn't move. It's not like when you take the money out, it stops growing. That money is still in there because you're saying, I'm willing to pay this money back plus interest. And that's mm -hmm. what you're telling life insurance. Like, hey, let me borrow this money. I need, I need to use this money right now. And I can go ahead and pay you guys back with interest. So that way my life insurance grows even more. So essentially you're growing that life insurance through this entire, um, you know, uh, time. And, and that's the power of life insurance. And that's why I chose life insurance as a, one of the biggest ways to leverage, um, you know, debt. <clears throat> so I just want to share this and then we'll go into that a little more. I was just curious. I was like, when did life insurance start? Uh, the sale of life insurance in the U S began in 1960 in Philadelphia, New York city created a corporation for relief for poor and distressed widows and children of the Presbyterian ministry. So in 1959, uh, it basically started, which is kind of interesting. So the obvious reason most people get into life insurance for if I die, or then I'll leave something behind for, you know, my wife, my kids, my family, whatever, whatever, whoever, right? Um, so that's the big thing with life insurance. But we're talking about it more as like an investor. Well, here's the question. What's so cool about life insurance while we're alive, right? And then we'll get into more stuff. And it, you, you basically said it. It's like investing money in yourself, right? And then you're borrowing money back from yourself. Um, and that's why is that good though? Because you're, you're putting money to work, right? Your yeah. money is not going to be just in a bank account collecting 0 0.01 interest. <laughs> okay. You know? right. so it's and than it's the very, the risk on life insurance is very low compared to a risk on an investment like a real estate or an yeah. investment like, um, like a car rental or like a, uh, or any automated business or any, any business, right? Every business is a risk. But if you're, yeah. if you're, if you want to get a consistent return on your money and you want to be able to use your money when you want, I mean, life insurance is where it's at because literally you're putting money into a life insurance other than the bank. And now they're giving out life insurances without any medical exams, cash value. You can put money yeah. into life insurance. That money grows 
at a market value, which is basically now it's like from like in the last few years has been like six to like 12%. It's going to be growing. Right. And it's in, you're basically invested, right? That money is invested. Uh, and also uh, the whole life insurance really doesn't have a loss period. There's like, there's a very low risk on a law. Some, some actually offer where there's no loss, but I recommend not doing those because you want to be able to ride the lows and the highs. Uh, and that gives you the ability, you know, your, your money will continuously grow because you're going to get this, you know, this, the rule of thumb of uh, cash value, average money being averaged over the course of 20 years, you're going to get way more money than if you only got the uh, roller highs. Uh, you want to be able to ride the lows as well. So eight, five to per, five to eight percent looks like, huh? Here, I'm just a little confused. So it's like, there's so there's these big life insurance companies, right? Yeah. Basically, they're guaranteeing the money that you put into your life insurance is going to go up in value, yes. five to eight percent per year. Yeah, that they're, they're they're not guaranteeing it, but you can choose a fixed rate and you're guaranteed four percent, for example, mm -hmm. or you can choose a variable rate. You're not guaranteed, but you're variable at this point. You can ride the highs and ride yeah. the lows, right? Uh, you in a, in that way, you you know the market trends up over time. Uh, yeah. You know we you know very rarely have we had those low 2009 crash, <laughs> right? And then what happened? Yeah. It just bounced back up even higher. If you compare stocks prices now compared to stocks prices, you know. 50 years ago, you know, they're all higher. You know, I'm a, Apple is not $15. See the value, dude. So this is bonds. You'll get a return of 1.6% if you do bonds. Here's the stock, right? They say 10%, but that's that's very rare. I don't even think most people get 10 or 20%, exactly. unless you're like all the time trading, you know what I mean? Or you have like Tony Robbins style, where you have a variety of, of stocks in a, in a portfolio, and then over time they go up ten percent. But basically, the value of life insurance is it's like it's a safe bet for your money to go up five to eight percent. And maybe we could find some higher ones, right? Okay, yeah. so now I get it. Now I get why life insurance is dope. Plus, and when you die, all that money goes to your loved ones and not exactly. anybody else. And you get yeah. the and, and you can have it owned by the trust. Which is, which oh, is even more powerful. Go. So you, you you know you can have life insurance owned by the trust instead of you. So if you you know something happens to you, the money goes back to the trust, and the trust pays out you know as accordingly as you stated. Uh, yeah. The you know the fire and the no, and, and life insurance is that yeah it grows but it grows tax free. Yeah. That's also dope. So when you, it's like having a Roth IRA type of thing where you, it, you put the money in and it grows. So when I take money against it, I don't have to pay taxes on it because it's like taking a house loan or like a line of credit off your house. It's the same concept. Right. You just take a loan so. against the money and you take it and you invest it. But the, what's beautiful about life insurance is that it continuously grows, even though you took money against it. When you do that in a 401k, it doesn't grow. You do that on a right. house. It, when you take money out of a house, your house technically, uh, you know, it, it grows or comes down, but it ha doesn't have the same uh, growth potential as a, as a life insurance because the mm -hmm. rate is like five to eight percent. Houses usually go up maybe at most one to two, three percent. You know, rarely it goes up five, ten percent a year, right? This, yeah. you know, during there was a spike when we had twelve percent. I think it was two thousand nine to two thousand twelve. <laughs> But uh, but like as far as like you know growth continuous growth without tax uh, implications, if you yeah. wanted to go take money out of your house, you would have to pay taxes on that money. You know unless you take a loan against your house, then you don't pay taxes. Same thing here. You can take a loan against your life insurance. And mm -hmm. you know now how many life insurances can you open compared to how many houses houses can you buy? Right. So now it's like well I can open up multiple life insurances instead of one house. Uh, or two houses. It's harder to buy a house than to open up a life insurance. Is what I'm getting at, you know, the yeah. getting at is that is opening up a life insurance for you, your spouse, your family, for a loved one willing to do it, and then and then not even having to do a potentially even a medical exam is unbelievable. And that's what's beautiful about this opportunity now. Um, but you know, the the best life insurances obviously are the ones that require medical because what they do is they give you a bigger debt benefit. Mm -hmm. And that's where that's where you can you can take advantage of those medical ones. You can get good debt benefit and get a good cash value. Um, but but usually it's the other way around. When debt benefit is not too high and the cash value is a lot bigger. And that's really what you want, because you want to be able to get the cash value to grow and you want to be able to put more money into it. So when I say uh, cash value, I'm saying every year I want to be able to put at least one hundred twenty thousand dollars every year. Now, usually life insurances, you put maybe like, I don't know, 50 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 yeah. bucks, right? That's I'm what I was going to ask. I'm talking about putting in like 
thousands of dollars every month into it because what's what what you're doing is instead of putting it into a bank which you would go let's say you get some money you go work getting a direct deposit you can put the money in the bank but then take that money and send it to your life insurance because what mm -hmm. happens is you can leverage it again anyways and it's going to grow instead of staying in a bank and the bank is wow. not going to give you anything but you can take that money and put it into your life insurance and it's going to grow instead of sitting in a bank that's powerful and then like let me just is the life does the trust own the life insurance or is the life insurance just connected somehow to the trust? The you trust know? has to be the beneficiary. Oh, the trust is the beneficiary of the life insurance. Yes. And then whoever's in the trust. So you, you could put like you, your, your wife, everybody, all your kids in that trust. Right. Right. And then if the, whenever your, your life insurance, if, if, you know, God forbid you die, all the money goes into that trust. They can do whatever they want with it basically. Cause they own the yeah, trust. Exactly. And even during the lifetime, that's the, that's the difference about cash values that during the yeah. lifetime of, of yourself, your family, your friends, whoever mm -hmm. is, it is in your, under your trust or the beneficiary of your trust, you are able to take money against that life insurance during the life period of that of that um, policy. So yeah. that means that you can use the money while you're alive, mm -hmm. and you can and and you get the death benefits. God forbid you die. <laughs> yeah, and you get the interest rate. So and you get it's, the, it's, and it's, 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 so it's growing. It's growing. You have yeah. it's growing at a, at a compound interest rate. We just talked about five to eight percent. It's leveraged you can leverage against it so the, yeah. the money doesn't go away you can you can make it grow it's growing continuously you can leverage against it and it still grows and then the final thing is you get a debt benefit that god forbid you die you get a debt benefit and the, all this money that was if you took out money for example you know the first second loan you're, you're you're basically like you can pay yourself back so your family won't be liable for the money that you took out nice so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, you know a lot so basically of though like it. It, I, I see it now I see I see like the, the fucking <laughs> picture but it's like trust holding company LLCs whatever money the LLCs come you can basically funnel back into your life insurance right to boost up its income and then you can right. borrow back to the trust and filter it down and use that money for whatever you want. Yeah, you kind you, of. You'll, you'll, use the, you'll use the life insurance to, uh, you know, to basically grow your your ass your your money your dollars, and mm -hmm. then you can take money against those life insurance to go ahead and invest in assets that your LLCs potentially own, and mm -hmm. then or buy a new property and open up a new LLC, right? And then you yeah. can just, you know have a bunch of uh, LLCs using the life insurance, and then you have that asset pay back the life insurance that you took money yeah, that's against, what I was thinking. while that money is still growing in the life insurance. So it's that's like weird. it's just insanity, right? It's like, well, where, why don't, why, why did, why wasn't this told to us? I don't know. All I know is the right. banks are doing it, so I'm doing it. And if you want to become go. a bank, you know, yeah. at literally, it's this is what it is. You want to become a bank, you have to open up life insurances for yourself and your family, and then you become your own bank. Yeah. And then you keep the money within yourself instead of going out and giving the money out, buying a house. Let's say I go buy a house, I'm gonna send you know twenty percent to this person that's you know, in Wyoming, <laughs> and, and then this person gets my $20,000, that $20,000 is dead. He has it, it's gone. I get the house, that's all I got. Now, if I put that money into a life insurance, and then I, then I, take, then I leverage the money and then go buy a house, I didn't lose the money. The money is still in my life insurance, and, I, and now I own an asset. And all I got to do is convert that asset to pay the, my life insurance back. So the money is still there. It's still liable. It's still a liability. But the thing is, you're leveraged, meaning that money never stopped growing, even though you just gave it to someone else to buy a house. My mind is blown. That's really <laughs> cool, dude. That's so that's insane. why. And, and it's, it's insanity, right? It's my mind yeah. is like, was like, well, like when I saw this, I thought like, this is insane. And I'm like, I'm sold. Let's go. So I wanted yeah. to go and get myself life insurance and get family members in my family life insurance. And I, and I, and the best way to do it is by, uh, you know, obviously get, you know, getting an appointment, getting, getting them to come in and, and do a cash value life insurance mm -hmm. while, uh, for anybody that's, you know, I would say under 50 and then, and then basically the whole life insurance for anybody that's over 50, because you want to get them the best rate and also so the debt benefit now yeah. if you're just trying to go against toward the debt benefit you always you don't you don't have to pay thousands of dollars every month into a life insurance if you just want like the debt benefit but if you do want to use it as a bank 
you will have to you put more money into it because that's literally what it is. It becomes like your bank. It requires you to put money into it as it grows. So you can you can tell them, hey, I'm comfortable with putting in 500 bucks a month. So my life insurance will grow at that will be a premium of, let's say, six thousand dollars a year. Uh, you know, it's all about your premiums, right? And put, put insurance. So whatever your premium is going to be is literally how much money you'll uh, grow at, you know, in compound interest. So you can, I can pull up a spreadsheet and show you, but basically uh, as your premium increases, the, the, the faster your um, life insurance cash value would increase because you're putting in more money, right? So the more money you put in, the bigger your cash value grows. And that means you have more money to leverage. So whenever you put, let's say I put hundred thousand dollars in from day one, I can leverage up to 85% of that money from day one. Uh, yeah. Usually it takes like 30 days when you can pull the money out or pull the, or pull the money against it. Like take the money against it, take a loan against it. It takes up to 30 days. But then after that, you can use the money, uh, invest the money, get the, make, let your money work for yourself, pull, get the income from the investment, pay back your, pay yourself back plus interest. So you're paying yourself interest and you're putting back money into your life insurance while it's growing. So it's never, it never stops moving is the point I'm trying to make. The money is yeah. continuously moving. And if it's, if the money, whenever money, if it stops moving, that's when it dies. And that's when it becomes useless. It becomes mm. dead money. Like when you, all my real estates that I have, it's dead money because I didn't take the money out and I didn't make it move. So it's stuck in there and I got to get the money out. So until I get the money out and put it to work, it's not leveraged. And essentially right. it's all about leveraging. So if you use one place, you uh, life insurance is another venue to leverage money against, even though that asset is growing. So now you mm -hmm. use the money twice. You have it leveraged in your life insurance and you have it leveraged in a business or real estate or any other, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity that you want to put your money into that's going to give you a return. So you can basically uh, use your money twice instead of once with life insurance. That's sick. So how much, well, let, let's, let's talk about like, just like regular average Joe getting started with life insurance. Like, what do you want to look at? But then I want to go off the record and be like, how can we make money with life insurance? Like, how can we get into that game? Maybe. Yeah. Um, so first though, let's just talk about like when you're looking at life insurance, cause I know you're, you've been shopping around, like, what are you looking for? What's a good, what is a good deal on a life insurance? Like, what do you want to see? I mean, it's not like you're getting a deal. Uh, essentially, you're 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 looking at how much how fast your money can grow in in a specific uh, you know portfolio that that they consider you know, certain portfolios. Like if you're retiring by the time you're 30 or 40, you can have mm -hmm. in a portfolio and it grows at the, at the, at those rates essentially. But great deal is basically you want to be able to get the um, get the most debt benefit while sustaining cash value. So as your debt benefit increases, you want to make sure your cash value stays uh, fairly high. And you want to, if you want to be able to get, you know, your debt benefit and your cash value to be maybe to be the same or even more on your, on your debt benefit side, if that, if you can get that, then you're solid because you got mm -hmm. more money to cover you if you die and you got a good cash value as it grows. Now the cash value uh, will, will outgrow the debt benefit if you live long enough, basically. Uh, yeah. But, you know, sometimes the cash value is only 250000 or 300000 So the best way to get the best deal is to look for, um, you know, the lowest payment amount with the highest uh, debt benefit, right? That's the best deal. But if right. you're looking at cash value, you're not looking at it like, oh, I got to get the best debt benefit. You're looking at like, well, how much can I put into this as fast as possible in order to give to be able to leverage this money as fast as possible? And is there a cap for how much money you can put yes, into them? And there is oh, a okay. cap. That's the IRS has a, a specific <laughs> cap rate, and I believe it's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Okay, so the goal, if you're really badass, is just hit that every year. But then, can you do that for you, your wife, your kids? So then you can stack. Basically, that's yeah, pretty crazy. obviously you have to have money to do that. But if you're well, if, yeah. you, if you have money sitting around, if you don't have money sitting around to, to be able to get multiple life insurances and you want to be able to start doing this and start leveraging yourself and be, become a bank without having to use your money and, and give it away. So stop giving your money away. Start pay, right. start giving start paying yourself by life insurance, mm -hmm. then take your money out of your life insurance and then go spend it as you want it. But do not spend it on things that are not going to give you a return with the money that you use off of life insurance. If you're going to go buy yourself food, you're going to go buy yourself a vacation, a flight or, or dinner or whatever, use, you know, credit cards, pay those off. That's fine. But when it comes to like uh, investments, life insurance is should, uh, money should only be used to invest because you want to be able to use that money to pay back the original debt, so to speak. 
on the life insurance that you originally put in. So that's your money. But the point is, instead of just putting the money into the house, you're putting it into a life insurance. So that way it can grow a compound interest mm -hmm. while you are taking the money again, taking the money out and using it somewhere else. So you're able to use that money twice. So imagine having a hundred grand mm -hmm. and being able to use it twice, meaning yeah. not only invest it into the market, which is the stock market and the, and the life insurance, which grows compound interest and has no interest or no uh, you know, taxes at the end is you can take it. And whenever you take a loan against something, it's tax free. So you're able to take the loan against the life insurance, use it somewhere else. And it's still growing. I mean, there's nothing else that can do that for you other than life insurance. Uh, that's yeah. the power of life insurance. That's why every bank in the United States, 25,000 banks all invest in life insurance. You can pull up um, even that website. It's called, uh, I think it's IBAN. I forget what it's called, but look up uh, 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 banks of life insurances, you'll see that they have, uh, you know, over 25 million, no, sorry, billion worth of dollars just in life insurance. Bank of America is one of the biggest life insurance investments investors out there. Uh, they basically get life insurances for all their clients, whether I, I don't know how, how they do it, but I think they do it, whether you like it or not, <laughs> yeah. essentially when they get, when they, you give them money, they're not going to keep that money in the bank. You think your money is in the bank? It's invested in life insurance. <laughs> yeah, because you know, it's compound that money, interest. That money is invested in life insurance. while it's, So if they're making money off your money, and then they come back and give you a 0.01% while they're making 8% off your money. Oh, shit. That's crazy. Fuck. Right. So then at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, they're, they're, they're also, uh, they're, they're, they're also using your money and they're giving you an inc And then whenever you want to use money, they'll give you a credit card. That's like 20%. And they say, Oh yeah, here's a credit card. Go use our go, go use the money that you already have in your bank, uh, on, on, on our credit. And they charge you an extra, like, you know, 15, 20%, even though you have money in the bank and you don't want to touch that money. So, because they're already leveraged, they took your money, they put into life insurance and they leverage that income that's already there and now they're giving it to you so they're making they're making interest twice they're making money off yourself and they're making money off credit cards and loans that they're giving you so they're making uh, off they're making money off us multiple times oh man this is a whole new world um yeah. so let's, let's talk about selling it though how can how can you make money selling people insurance like or joining underneath you we can you do can, it off the record or whatever but can, i want to know everything you know what you know you're not you're not you're not gonna be able to open up your own life insurance because you have to have enough money to open one up but you can you can leverage other life insurances that have affiliate marketing type of thing where you can actually get some affiliate uh, uh, referral fees if you're going to bring a client or you can also do it where it's uh, you if you have the means and you're able to uh, invest if you're willing to invest in life insurances like like I am where you would basically invest your money into a life insurance, whether it's a friend, family, or someone that is uh, related to you in some way, shape, or form, or connected to you, you can get life insurance for them. And you are able to basically, um, even an employee, you can get them life insurance. Uh, you you know, that's, that's something you can do, but you can also be the one that pays for it and is the beneficiary of it. So not only can you pay for it for them, and you can, you can even have them pay into it, for example, uh, but they would be the beneficiary. But if they don't want to pay for it and, they, and you can invest, you can invest into their life insurance, pay for it, and then you or your or your trust will be the beneficiary of that life insurance at the end of death of that person. And during their lifetime, the trust or whoever is the owner of that policy has the right to use the money in the life insurance, meaning you can leverage other people and their life insurances while they're alive and invest that money and, and make money off their money while it's growing. And then and God forbid something happens, these people die, you'll get the benefits of their debt benefit at the end of death, or you can use the money while they're alive. And, that, and you, that's your money because you invested it into them. And now you're able to uh, use that money and invest and also pay back with interest. So again, you're able to pay yourself interest, you're able to leverage the money and make uh, other, other income from other investments, and your money is growing while it's in their policy. It's crazy. So it's but that's it how like, you invest in life insurance, and that's like yeah. that's the like new game plan. So if you want, if you want to invest other, other than houses, I mean, life insurance is basically an, uh, a house in a, in, on a human being. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a walking house. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know how many how, how many houses are there in the world yeah you know there's probably a few million you know or a billion whatever uh you know maybe billion but there's definitely seven billion human beings in the world you know yeah and, and i think you know 300 million are in the united states and i think about maybe 
10% of those people are down and get life insurance. And if, and if some of these people may even be willing to do it as long as we give them a return on their, on, on their, on their money based on the money that we invest in them. So let's say we make money off their, off the investments, we give them a return. We're able to use them as a life insurance mechanism, a vehicle to put our money into and let it grow. And then meanwhile, we're able to take the money against it and invest while they're alive. Yeah, that's crazy. And so it's a whole nother game plan. And, and it's a little bit, uh, you know, high level. And it's like really bank level. Uh, you know, we're talking about bankings, right? So banks, this is how the banks operate. I'm telling you that I'm acting like the bank and I'm using other people. I'm leveraging other people's lives and their life yeah. insurance policies. And in, in order to use that money, instead of keeping it into, uh, into my, uh, in my little basket here, which the banks have, they're not, they're not going to, they're not going to keep their money in a basket. They're going to take their money and they're going to invest it out to life insurances to make sure that they, their money is making money while they're leveraging that money and giving it back to the same people that they took the money from and giving them a credit card and making them pay for more interest. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a game changer. I mean, being the bank, I'm ready. Hey, I'm going to have Gino Nadarov credit card soon. And it's going to say, you want a credit card? <laughs> Come apply the Gino Nadarov credit card Dude. system and we'll get you we a need, credit card. You know, at that like, point, Credit Leverage X, crazy. banking, the banks are about to come out. You know what I mean? <laughs> get <Yeah>. ready. <laughs> you know, so... Dude, why isn't there a crypto coin that's backed by life insurance yet? You'd think there would be. Because that's like the ultimate uh like backing it's like it's not gold it's not land it's like human beings there's only a certain amount of human beings so there's value Fuck, right. we, and, we and and, 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 and when up. they die there's guaranteed a payout yeah exactly so it's, it's the best it's the best it's Crazy. the best investment out of the, bet. actually it could you know it might not it won't outlive a house but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, it does uh, have an ending but i mean all all, in, all investments should have an ending or an exit plan you know the exit plan yeah. somebody dies or you borrow a little bit from it here and there is there any risk to it i mean could you get your money I mean, caught up in like a on like a death problem but i mean you'd, no, I, set I think, you'd set all that up ahead of time you know yeah you set it up all ahead of time i think that the only risk is you know the the the, the life insurance like defaults business right? yeah the bank yeah they default but i they're also guaranteed by the fdic i believe uh no, there yeah. is some they're like a bank right they're operating like a bank so they have a federal like uh regulations um yeah. and then they're they're and they're supported so then uh essentially you know you may able you may you may want to like in you know invest in multiple life insurances so that way you're always covered under the fdic rules or whatever yeah. um you know but the, but the, the really the the risk i mean what's more riskier than a bank right what's more riskier than crypto right this is yeah, yeah. definitely less risky so this, is the, this is probably the least the least, least risky the investment. least yeah. riskiest thing is life insurance and nobody is doing it I'm just looking at all these questions that's, about selling <laughs> life insurance now. That's really like, what it comes down to. It's like nobody is doing it. It's the it's okay. the least uh you know least risk there is essentially. <laughs> so basically, this is crazy. So if you if I sell somebody on life insurance, like and I, I pay for it, I guess maybe. No, I don't think I pay for it. I don't know, but you can get between fifty to eighty percent of the death benefits policy. That's crazy. Yes. Now, now apparently, it's is, very hard to sell. <laughs> yeah, but everything. Well, the thing is, if you if you don't pay for it you know, there, you can't really be the beneficiary unless you're willing to pay for someone else. Right now, yeah. uh, you know, why would you pay for something if you're not going to benefit from it? It doesn't make sense. Uh, no. Now, if the person is paying for it, they should be the beneficiary. They're not going to be like giving it to you. So then yeah. essentially you want to be the person that pays for it because you want to be able to use that money uh, whenever you want. And, 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 and then, that's and then money, the more, right? the more money you put in it, I guess you can only put $120,000 into it per year, but right. that's guaranteed going to go up five to 8%. So that's why there's value right. in it. But that's there's crazy. also dump, uh, dump or lump, lump sum uh, investment. So you can do like I'm doing for my, for my, uh, for my family, we're going to put in like 75,000 lump sum. So yeah. I'm going to put a 75,000 lump sum. And I'm now I'm at 75,000. I'm not at zero. I'm not at 1,000. Yeah. Like how, how fast and how soon do you want to access the money? Well, if you get some money laying around, put it in life yeah. insurance. Right. Right. Definitely Take, probably better than some investments. Right then now, keeping sure. it in the bank account or putting it into real estate. If you don't know what to do with your money, put it into life insurance. Yeah, then at least you bet. can, at least it's growing. And then you can take a loan against it and go ahead and invest that money into whenever, whenever you have a deal that comes through, or you got mm -hmm. some investment that you want to make, the money is right there. It's just like having a line of credit. There's nothing different cool. with that. It's just, uh, it's, the, it's a like secured line of credit. It's a secured <laughs> line of credit, not yeah, just by the life. house. It's not backed by the house. It's yeah. all, it's backed by these, you know, billion dollar life insurance corporations, right? 
Yeah. That are basically uh, has all our money, all these mm -hmm. people's lives in their pockets. And they're literally like leveraged, you know, they're leveraged right. to hell and they're leveraged through the federal reserve. So they don't have all that money. Essentially yeah. they have, they have a lot of money, but a lot of money is, is, is fractionalized. So whenever they, you know, whenever you put money into it, they only give you what you put into it because they're not, they, because if you're, if you were to put, if you were to pay, take out more money against it, they won't give it to you because you don't have the money in it. So it's yeah. not like you can't, it's not like you can go get, uh, you know, more money from your, let's say a 50,000, you can't get a hundred thousand when you only have 50,000 in there, which is what I'm trying to say. You have to be able to have the money available and you can take up to 80% to 85% of that total amount because they want to have at least 15 to what 15 and 20 they're operating like a bank they want 15 to 20 percent equity <laughs> yeah. they want 15 to 20 percent equity because at the end if you default they got the money you mm -hmm. know if you stop paying if you cancel your life insurance you stop paying for your life at least they took 20 percent of your money you know oh, damn so they just they just take your money right and then mm -hmm. they don't pay out so they don't pay that benefit they just take your money and they it's a it's, it's a no-brainer and, and, and it's like it's like in thin air it's not like it's not like a hard asset. It's not like a microphone or like a car or a house. It's like, it's not a hard asset. It's just like in the air, like crypto, except it's, it's in, it's a growing in the market and it's taxed. Well, that was a lot, man. Is there any other really important things about life insurance that we missed, you think, before we wrap it up? I mean, uh, in investment ports, that investment ways, no, uh, you know, I recommend everybody get life insurance for their families, especially yeah. their parents. I guess that's uh, one thing. Like my know, dad's like 70 something. Is there any point putting life insurance? Cause you, I'd be gonna paying be harder more, to right? get him a life insurance unless he, as long as he's good in health, he does, if he doesn't have diabetes or any of those, uh, you know, difficult health, like sugar, like having high mm -hmm. blood pressure or sugar problems. Right. Uh, those things are obviously <laughs> harder. So yeah, Not a lot of people in America that are 70 yeah. don't have on bed. Yeah, you know? so they're all on fucking bed. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, I, I think the view, you, you know, better you to start to on myself. Best. Right. And then yeah, just start my, early though. My, my grandma had life insurance, but then they get, she outlived her life insurance. And then we got, we, we were like, we got stuck in a situation where we had to deal with that. But essentially you want to be able to uh, get whole life and cash value. So that way you never, it doesn't matter if the, per, if the person lives longer and, and the end and whatever, right. You don't mm -hmm. care. You get your cash value will be bigger than your debt benefit because you, you're putting in more money. So that's so, what it I, comes down to. I'm just interested in kind of selling whole life insurance now. Like, it seems like if you sell somebody on a whole life insurance, you probably get a, a commission when you sell them. And then you might get like a piece of their life insurance all the way until they die, right? That'd I'm be crazy. assuming there is. I'm assuming when they die, you get a you whenever they whenever they die, there's like payout. Everybody gets paid, right? Yeah. And you ben you basically benefit by having that um that the benefit of having that client being somebody you sold to, right? right. So you so get like compound interest on all compound, the people you money, sell. So basically, you're now that they these people are making money off other people's money. Yeah, because there are there are people are investing their money into life insurance. So if you're yeah. a life insurance agent, it's probably beneficial. So you can right. actually sell life insurance and then you can make money off their off the other people paying for it. So you're making money off other people's payments. And at the end of death, you get paid out or your or your your family gets paid out on this other person's life insurance. Um, yeah. I think that's great. I think like, you know, maybe we can one day sell life insurance for, for our clients. Uh, and yeah. that would be something that we can potentially provide as a service. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of people will be willing to, uh, you know, invest in life insurance and we can help them set it up for themselves. That way they become their own banks. Right. Yeah. Uh, for us, like if not, we also offer a, for you life insurance, we would offer them a, a, well, let's, we'll get you a life insurance and we'll pay for it, but we're going to be the mm -hmm. beneficiaries. However, we're going to give you, let's say a percentage at the end of death, for example, you know, God forbid something happens to you, your family would get 15% of whatever amount that yeah, uh, the be life insurance care of. death benefit is, or, yeah. uh, or for example, uh, we'll give them a cash value percentage or a monthly return uh, on, on, uh, on our uh, investment. Oh, you can give people monthly returns or yeah, quarterly, quarterly return or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whenever we get, whenever we want to, we, when, as them, as the account grows, you can take money mm -hmm. against it and pay people out. Right. So, yeah. you know, if the account, if I put in a, uh, let's say a hundred thousand, and in three months from now, it goes to 105,000. You know, I can give people a return on their money. Well, I think that was fire. If you guys have any questions about life insurance, feel free to reach out to us or drop a question down below and we'll get to you. Uh, as we learn more and we grow and we get even crazier with life insurance, we'll keep you guys updated. Talk to you in the next one.